Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Letter. In the last episode, we were at Isabella's apartment. We got a hold of uh, Zach and... Well, we did, actually didn't get a hold of Becca. Yeah, but we, she uh, just called. She is just called, and apparently, from her tone, it is not going to be great. No. All right, so she has to say. <laughs> Are you there? I get a bit out of breath. There's a tinge of urgency in it. Listening to her from my side of the line makes it seem like she just ran a marathon prior to this call. Becca, where? I got your message. What happened? Nothing. Yet. Where are you? Downtown. I... I had to make a quick visit to the library. Listen, Ash, about that thing Isabella has been talking about. There's something you guys need to... Please tell me you didn't... <sighs> Whatever. Save it for later. I'm at Salem Well. If you can get here as soon as possible, that'd be really great. This is... Related to that. You're there? Is, is Isabella with you? Yeah, Zach too. With a quick press of the button, I switched on the loudspeaker and stepped back into Isabella's apartment. I hold out the phone towards the two, giving it two shakes, urging them to speak. Both are still carrying worried looks on their faces. This should ease Rebecca's that. Rebecca's asking for you too. Becca? Is she okay? Hey, Becca! Hello, Rebecca. Odd morning we have, eh? Well, we'll tell you once you get here. Please hurry. A little bit. I don't like the sound of that, Ash. Uh, but I'm on my way. It gives me a few minutes. I'm driving. She mumbles a goodbye, then hangs up. Becca's the last person I need to account for, yet that call left me an even more strained tension in the room. Da -da -da -da. Thankfully, we don't have to linger in it for too long. She only takes a matter of minutes to get here, and the second she steps into the room, Isabella clings to her. I'm so glad you're okay. Ashton checked on you this morning, but... He did? I I'm sorry, I was in a hurry. I didn't have time to drop by and let you know. It doesn't matter. What's important is you're here. Not burnt to a crisp or brutally murdered somewhere. Whole, alive. Although she seems a bit shaken, it doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. At least now I can relax, ease the pressure off my shoulders, if only by some. But the minute Isabella pulls away from her, she winces. A small reaction the younger woman doesn't even catch. It sets a precedent for a careful observation, nonetheless. A closer look at her reveals a much more disheveled... Reveals a much more disheveled than usual. Hair in a bit of a mess, probably flattened in a hurry. The back of her dress also shows some stains of dirt in places it rarely gets to. She's also leaning more on using her left arm. She's right-handed. Perhaps the most telling is the slight limp she has. Noticeable once Isabella leads her into the room. It all sprouts a hateful of... A hatful of questions. What exactly happened and how did she end up in that state? Pretty sure a simple trip to the library won't do that. I grab for her arm before she can walk past, carefully to avoid hurting her in case there really is an injury. Seems like it at first glance, but you can't really tell until after careful examination has been made. I suspect some bruising at least. Although minor internal fractures aren't out of the, out of the equation, they have a nasty way of staying hidden. Sure enough, Becca tenses immediately upon contact. Tries to pull back, although she sudden, the sudden gesture only elicits another wince, forcing her and Isabella to a halt. Both of them turn to me almost at the same time, their eyes searching mine for answers. Rebecca, for her part, doesn't appear quite pleased with the interruption. Or the fact that someone has brought it to light. That someone also has to make sure... Are you alright? Are you alright? I feel like that one. Are you okay? You're limping. Okay, I was gonna- I didn't think that would be the wrong answer, but no. you never know. As expected, she tries to hide it. This time, when she squirms from my grasp, it's with enough force, she almost stumbles back if Zack hadn't caught her by the elbow. Even with two more people shooting her concerned looks, she's swift to shrug it off. It's fine. I just had a little accident. Little accident. Hard to believe when her other arm's nursing the supposedly fine arm. Isabella doesn't buy any of it either. In a library? Well, I... Yeah. It kinda caught me off guard. Something's happened there, hasn't it? I don't have to elaborate on the question further. Shortly, she goes very still, and the hand placed over her right arm shifts ever so slightly. It's a grip on the limb tightening. Not too firm to hurt, but just enough for a gesture of comfort for herself. Wearily, she casts a glance at everyone in the room. But only the one she spares for Isabella lingers long, and in the, that moment, something unspoken passes between them. An understanding. It strikes me seconds later how utterly familiar her expression is. It's the same one I've seen far too many times in Isabella. 
Since that day at the movie house, every time her attempts to warn us have been so rudely dismissed. Let me see. Can... can we? We have to check if it's bad. Rebecca hesitates for a moment. Then after a minute of consideration, she sighs and reaches for the hem of her sleeve, raises it just enough for Isabella to take a good look at it. Not swollen, but a large portion of her skin is starting to turn an ugly shade of purple. Oh, that is gonna be one hell of a nasty bruise. Tell me about it. It was a library cart that hit me. You know, the old metal ones they keep near the history section. Ouch! Like I said, nasty. But she's there? She went after you. Yeah, I... I was in the archives, looking something up. Suddenly, she was just there. Belle, she was using my own students against me. What kind of terrible, terrible person does that? Oh, it makes my blood boil. You should have just ran. That woman's not something you can hit with a... with a book. <laughs> True. <laughs> Laugh it up, Ashton. I did. Then the bloody cart came out of nowhere. And you know what? If it weren't for a damn book, I would be dead by now. Silence just sends in the room as the gravity of what of that one word hits us all. Dead. Another close call. Another would have. Another one we've narrowly avoided. How long can we keep this up? We're bound to break at one point. No normal human being with a sane mind can last like this. It's a miracle Isabella hasn't cracked yet. After all, she was the one who found that letter. I've expected her to have caved by now, yet her voice, calm and composed in the face of this, is what cuts through the thick air. I'll go get a cold compress for that arm. You guys take a seat first. Ashton and I, we, we have a lot of things to talk about. That marks the end of it, at least for the time being. And as soon as Isabella returns and hands Rebecca the cold compress she promised, we get straight down to business. Surprisingly easy considering the rigid air in the room. Although there's some tense fumbling for words at first, the whole conversation gains steam once what happens last night at BRC has been put on the table. All at once, everything we've brushed off, carelessly ignored, and rudely dismissed have been laid out for close scrutiny. Zack's encounters with the woman and his dreams, Rebecca's close brushes with death every time she appears, the dread, the fear, the terror she brings out, even in the bravest of us. Everything. Because no matter how bleak this all seems, there must still be a way out of this. There has to be. Logic be damned. Or at least that's what Isabella and I would like to believe. That died. <laughs> Yet even as the cold morning light shifts to the warm hues of late afternoon and eventually night, none of this still makes a fucking damn sense. Agreed. None of this still makes a fucking damn... Alright. <laughs> he wants to put swear words in there for... Even without the swear words, it died, that doesn't make a sense, doesn't make sense. It makes total sense in his world. Oh, all right then. <laughs> Darkness has fallen, but we're still nowhere near figuring things out. If anything, we're more at a loss than when we've ever been before we even started this. The next thing I know, frustration raises its ugly head, and the sheets of paper I've been holding smacks the table harder than I've no intended. The sound of it echoes loudly in the small room, and everyone simply falls silent. Along with it is a release of another long-held breath. Perhaps a hundred since this morning. We aren't getting anywhere at this rate. Don't just drop it. There must be something in this we aren't seeing yet. It's an odd thing to hear from her. The very words I've been telling myself every single time I find myself facing a dead end. We can use a little optimism right now, I guess. I know, but what are we supposed to be looking at here in the first place? Well, we already looked through those files. All of them? Wait, did it just stop? Yeah, it just stopped. Um, you're the one that picked them out last night, right? All of them. I'm pretty sure every person we've checked in there isn't necessarily involved. One client possibly died of old age. I don't think so. I don't think so either, but I, I mean, trying to like approach it logically, I, I could, you would have to at least accept that as a possibility. Correct. Remember, you found that dumb paper. <laughs> Not so dumb if it can kill all of us. <laughs> Very funny, Z-Man. Anyway, like I said, you discovered that paper right before the open house. No one else was allowed inside during that time. It's too broad of a scope if we include every single person. In fact, the only notable ones are C and Jean Marie. But if we're going to include them in the count, shouldn't there have been more than enough people to end this fucking curse already? How does this thing even work? Yeah, okay, they went in and out of this place. But no, you still don't get it. What I'm trying to say about those clients is- Shouldn't we look into the mansion too? That's where the letter came from. That's where she came from. Maybe it's just as the professor says. Maybe you should ask the previous owners why they sold the house. 
Right? Hmm. You did tell me there might be more to this than what I might be thinking. Yeah. I mean, look at all this stuff Rebecca brought with her. Apparently, our teachers have been lying to us all these years. So who knows? Hey, now don't blame us. Blame the bloody books they wrote. <laughs> Quietly, Isabella reaches for one of the papers Rebecca has brought with her and carefully inspects the words printed on the page. A copy of an old newsprint from even before the city has been founded. Her eyes narrows with each line it passes, but lingers at the illustration of the nobleswoman's servant. Why do they have to keep this in the restricted section? Rebecca merely shrugs at her inquiry, but her own annoyance seeps through her answer. How should I know? I wasn't even aware we have archives that go as far back as this. This is before the city was even founded. As a matter of fact, if it weren't for Andrew's help, I wouldn't have gotten my hands on any of it. Maybe they didn't think it would be important to talk about it. After all, this is more Anselm's than ours. That or some old bugger's hiding something. Why else would they tell us a completely different story? Revising what's written seems a useless endeavor on its own when you have nothing to gain from it. But this might as well mean that what happened in that mansion years ago also equates into all this. And the letter Isabella found? It's at the heart of it. The why and the how is what we're missing here. If I'm going to go by what Andrew told Zack, the connection between the letter and the mansion's curse may run deeper than what we initially thought. We won't be able to figure this out without looking into the other. Fuck. What do I do? The mansion's private property now. Can't just waltz in there. I'd rather die before I even think of begging Wright to let me in and investigate the place. One thing's very clear after these last two days, however. We're not safe anywhere and I have to act fast if I want to keep my own friends alive. We can't keep running away. Sooner or later, she'll get us. Before that happens, I have to put an end to this. <sighs> Sighing, I stand up and stretch out the kinks in my back after several hours of sitting. We've been at this for too long. A break is needed. A time to let everything sink in or else we'll all burn out. I know I will and... It's another thing I cannot let happen when they're all counting on me like this. I'll be unspoken. It's in their eyes as they look up at me waiting. We've been at this since morning. We should take a break for a few. Oh, come on. <laughs> the rest of it never makes it out of my mouth as something heavy and grating sound. It's uh, from the far end of the room. A harsh booming noise rendering through the eardrums of everyone in the room. All at once, the three of them are on their feet while I quickly palm for my gun on the table. However, before I can pull it up and remove the safety, the whole racket stops. Stillness descends in the room, and amidst the sudden hush, the four of us exchange anxious glances. So much for a break. Ashton, that might be. Gather everything. No questions asked, they waste no time getting the work, piling up the documents we've been reading through. Even Isabella's is unusually silent as she gathers everything in her arms, her own movements sharp and precise, a deep furrow in her brow. There's fear, but something's but something hardened and urgent overshadows it. But the moment doesn't last. Before we can even finish, another noise ups the tension already gripping the place. Suddenly the lights go out and the wardrobe at the end of the room rattles, as if something inside begs for freedom. Cautiously, eyes glued to it, I take a step forward and I release a lot from my gun. I'm no trigger happy person, I'm not even sure if this will work on a ghost. But right now, it's smooth surface against my palm with the trigger on my finger provides the closest thing I have to relief as I approach the closet. Shin, what are you doing? I, I don't think that's a good idea. We should just... Where as they all are, they immediately stop at the slight raise of my hand. But the edge is there while they all huddle in the space between the door and the room. In case this goes south, whatever I find inside, they have enough time to space and space to run from their position. And two deep breaths have crossed the room and stood in front of the closet. Oh god. Whatever's inside has yet to stop thrashing. Instead, it has now moved to banging at the door louder and louder the longer I delay. I dally. Another shallow breath. A glance at my companions. A nod. Something creaks. Then in the next moment, I'm grasping at the handles and swinging the doors wide open to reveal. Nothing. Nothing. Right away, I part the clothes hanging out and still none. No ghost, no woman, not a single trace of whatever, whoever's inside. Confused, I glance back towards my companions only to see them mirroring the same expression on my face. Oh, we're going to look back and it's going to be bad. The noise has finally stopped, but I'm quite sure it isn't my imagination. Maybe it is, and I'm just too stirring up that my head's now making things up. Whatever the case is, we need to get out of here as soon as possible. This only confirms we aren't safe anywhere. 
Without bothering to close it, I move back, ready to leave. Adrenaline now coursing through every vein in my body. There we go. I was like, there, yeah, something is coming from there. In the next second, I'm barking orders and... We should go. Everyone, we need to... Ah! I'm sent sprawling on my back as something cold catches my ankles and yanks. There we go. The resulting fall knocks the wind out of me. Pain racks my whole spine and the back of my head as it collides against the floor with force enough to dislodge my own brain from my skull. A moment lasts before stars fade from my vision, and then I sense it. Cold tendrils twisting around my ankles, the smell of a vile rot assaulting my nose, nauseating, sickening. Why is no one helping us? I don't like, someone go over there and like whack her with a book. A foul smell draining every feeling in my body. The moment her horrid laughter, still as unpleasant and vicious as the last time I've heard it, reaches my ears, my eyes snap open. There she is. <laughs> Some of the bad. Uh, perhaps it's just an experience. Or maybe my mind's attempting to comprehend this. Regardless, the minute my eyes land on her, my whole body freezes. The gun in my hand turns useless as my grip on it slackens. Smack her in the face! Yeah. It's in the matter her gaze bores on me, I'll say. The look of utter hatred and malice I've seen loads of time. From suspects, mostly murderers, who never regretted their actions despite being caught, this is the face of someone you can no longer reason with. Uh, and I know, the moment she laughs again and starts dragging me towards her, it's already going to be the- Ashton! Snap out of it! No. I can't die here. Not yet. The haze fades from my mind and instant kicks in then and there. Everyone out! Get out! Get out of here! <laughs> with one powerful tug, I yank my foot out from her grip and scramble back to my feet, ignoring the piercing wail she fills the room with. Within the span of a second, I'm gunning for the door, grabbing the wrist of the first person my hand can reach and leading everyone out. Into the hallway. Down the flight of steps and right inside my car. I waste no time flooring on the gas pedal the second the last person closes the door behind them. And in a short while, I'm driving us out of Salem Wall. I don't even entertain the thought of winding down just yet. Even as the last of the woman's painful cries fade into the night. Da -da -da. Did we sleep in the park? <laughs> Maybe. Holy crap. So here's my thing. He's a freaking detective. Like, you wouldn't have thought to, like, kick her in the face to dislodge her from your leg? I'm pretty sure, like, he was just, like, paralyzed. Because, like, you aren't expecting ghosts. Uh, I don't think police training covers ghosts. I'm pretty sure the armoire and him walking back. I, watch horror movies. You know it's going to be there. <laughs> That's true. If there's, if there's one thing to learn from all this, it's watch more horror movies so you're prepared. Mm-hmm. All right, that seems like a good place to uh, end it. Holy crap. <laughs> that was fun. Curious to see. I don't think we've shifted perspective we yet. We haven't. We're still October 31st. Yeah, which I believe is the furthest we've gone date-wise. I think so. November 1st is the farthest it goes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is all, like, undiscovered. Oh, my God. So we're, like... So I have a feeling there's two more days because there's two undiscovered entries, and we only have him and Luke left. Yeah. So I think it'll go one more day. I'm hoping it gets like the Scoobies to go in and like investigate the mystery of the house is where we end up. Hopefully. <laughs> Interesting to see how they get in though. Yeah. All right. Anyway, that's going to do it for us. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time.